Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's your favorite duo, Evie. You're supposed to say and Eric. I know, but then I'm saying I'm, I don't know. That seems self like. Okay, you say Evie. It's your favorite duo, Evie. And Eric. Eric, what Is the hell was not that? Not enough enthusiasm. No, like that wrestling sucked. Evie. Wow, you're clipping. <laughs> well, you told me to go bigger. Okay, that was great. Okay. I liked it. Hello, everybody. I have a bone to pick with you, Eric. For God's sake. <laughs> yeah, that's how we're going to start this off as. Now, on, what was it, Sunday night, we were watching football. I stayed up so that you wouldn't have to be lonely watching football. <laughs> and I ended up falling asleep because I was tired on the couch, but still moral support was right there beside you. <laughs> And then I woke up, and the TV was off, and you were snugged in bed. And I was on the couch. What the hell did you leave me on the couch for? Please, explain. Your Honor. Yes. There are facts missing there are no facts. this particular telling no, of the story. No, all of the evidence is on the table. You <clears throat> left me on the couch, did not wake me up to go to bed with you. The the first point of order is I don't necessarily need the company for the football yes, game. Yes, you do. You you can watch the football games if you want with me. No. But it doesn't take away from my experience if at halftime you're like, I'm tired and you go to bed and I'm stuck watching the second half on my own. No, That's see, not a bad stuck. thing. Stuck. Stuck is a bad thing. You wanted me there with you watching the game. Secondly. Mm-hmm. The thing you're missing out on is through the fourth quarter when I was saying, I'm getting ready for bed. Are you coming to bed? And when the hell did you say that? I was asleep during the fourth quarter. Right. So you do this thing where you come out of sleep for a second and acknowledge that words were said, but don't (laughs) act on it. No way. So you know what that's called? That's called sleepwalking. I'm ready to go to sleep sleep talking. You'll wake up and go. And then you just go back to sleep. Sorry. Did you just hear what you said? Yeah. You take that for me acknowledging what you're saying? It's not ignoring me. It is absolutely ignoring me. It is gibberish. It is absolute gibberish. It's nonsense. It doesn't make sense. I have no idea what you said. I was sleep talking to you. And if you don't know that I do that by now, then I don't know how close this relationship is. I'm, I'm just saying, unfortunately... You're doing two things wrong in this case. One, you're ignoring the fact that I did try to tell you multiple times that I'm that the game is over. I'm going to bed. And you're also falling on your sword as if, oh, Eric asked me to stay up to watch the game. First of all, I can I can take the bite in the ass for you specifically not asking me what you didn't kind of turn a phrase is that whatever i got i got i got the phrase wrong but whatever that's not the point we don't just be stuck on semantics or phrases (laughs) here but technically no you didn't specifically outright ask me to stay up with you however i know you don't like watching things by yourself you just don't it's the truth you like the company you're like ah making some Feels fall like we're getting soup, reintroduced cracking here. a beer, and watching a game together. That's what life is all about. Sunday football, am I right? Okay, second of all, whatever. I'll take the, the loss on that one. You didn't. But, however, asking me in my sleep... If I'm going to get ready and go to bed with you, like even you know that sounds wrong. Like imagine me asking you for $5 while you're sleeping and then being like, hey, remember when I asked you for $5 and you said, you totally said yes to that. But that's false because I am completely aware Every time you wake up in the middle of the night and make noise, like when you broke the handle off the door. (laughs) Just <laughs> clattering across the bathroom floor. <laughs> that so is not my I fault. I am fully aware when stuff happens, and I can repeat that in the morning. Okay, can I just tell you yeah. that me using my wheelie chair to knock down the handle that is not 
tight on there. Why didn't you put it back on? It, first of all, it's, why is the good because, move to just leave it on the counter? Because it's. <laughs> It just locks because into place. You I don't want to make more on. noise. The thing with a handle falling on a on a tile floor is that it wakes you up. The damage up. is done. But listen, it wakes you up. So when you're awake to remember that that happened, you are awake. When you are talking in your sweet, calm, smooth voice, Evie, I'm going to bed soon. You're going to get ready for bed. And I'm like, hummer, 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 literally, I am sleeping still. I would make sure that you literally come to bed. I would carry you if I could to bed to make sure that you are nice. You look comfortable snuggly. on the couch. No, 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 no. I the fell couch asleep on the couch last bed. week. What Listen, happened there? The, that, that's because I was watching master class. Okay, and then I fell asleep. Guys, we were both in bed. We were both in bed. I and then Eric was like, I can't sleep. So he gets up and says, I'm gonna go to the tv room and watch more master class i'm like okay i'm gonna stay here and sleep and you're like okay that's fine so then you made the conscious decision to go to the other room watch master class i am no longer responsible if that's you fall all... asleep if we are both doing an activity together and one falls asleep so the making it into the bedroom is the checkpoint yes so then you're absolved yes. of anything that happens until exactly. sunrise exactly exactly if these we, are the rules yes if we make it into the bedroom and then i decide to get up from bed and go out and do something else and i end up falling asleep in the office on the toilet on the couch it's my fault it's my responsibility but doing an activity together and me specifically staying up to keep you company and then making no. sure that I don't get to bed, that is where I draw the line. I'm just so pleased how much this is bollocks. It's not bollocks. You guys, let us know what you think, okay? Whose side are you on? Are you on Eric's side where it's not his responsibility at all? You are a big girl who knows when she's tired. Are you on my and can side? carry her ass to bed. Listen, I knew I was tired. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to fall asleep, but I knew I was tired. Mm. And I knew also Eric. that I love you oh. and that I wanted to oh, stay up with you. Playing. It's not a card. Yeah, you know what? It you is a card. You wanted to stay up. I'm By s- falling asleep. <laughs> I wanted to keep what you company. What the hell kind of logic is that? I wanted to keep you company. Okay. I knew that you would be a little sad if I said, Eric, I'm going to bed. You'd be like, oh, but the football game is almost over. It's only Hi, one I'm quarter Eric. left. I don't think we've met before. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. All right. We'll leave it with you guys. What do you guys think? Eric does not think Text he's in the wrong. In. <laughs> Eric doesn't think he's in the wrong. I totally think. I was like. I was pretty pissed that he didn't, that he was nope, all I'm chuffed. Tucked this in. is completely unraveled for you. <laughs> no. Live on air. I, I would have done it for you. I don't see why you would have not made sure that I was in bed. Anyways. Anyway. Okay. okay. Let's move on to the name of our podcast. Now, don't get excited, everybody. We don't have a name chosen. However, because I'm the one that does all the work, making sure Eric goes to sleep, in bed. <laughs> Uh, I, I came up with names for the podcast. Did you come up with any names? No, because you said you were going to. It's Division of Labor. I That's said I was going to. No way. Yeah. I said I no had way. come up with. Okay. I said I had come up with names. <laughs> Perfect. So I don't need to run over the same ground. <laughs> yeah. I believe in your creativity. I don't think you do because you're going to probably shoot Hit down every them. single one. Let's okay. go. Do you hear those papers, everybody? That's me going to the notebook. Going through the notebook great narrator this is good for good for audio okay so i you already know this name because i already brought it up to you but you don't like it the name of our podcast one of the names of our podcast is sorta deep sorta deep with evie and eric now i don't like it why don't you like it because i feel like we if we're going to do it, we do it right and we cover all the bases. I think we forensically unpacked how you were wrong in the previous okay, segment. So so we didn't go sort of deep on that one. We covered it. Well, the topic itself is a sort of deep topic. It's okay. not deep, but it's also like it's not going to create a divorce. Well, it might, but it's also like not surface level. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
So anyways, Eric doesn't like the name or he expressed that he didn't like it to me because it sounds very sexual. But I think that the double entendre, the the innuendo there is like we are in a relationship. So instead of naming it like the relationship podcast or couples therapy, no shade, um, <laughs> like we would I have something. Uh, no, I thought like it's a, I, a good I think name. it's a great name. I think it's a great name. Um, we have something that's still like technically a relationship because of the sexual innuendo, but like, like it's about us that is too much of a subcategory right things. now. Like if you look at the top 100 podcasts, there's at least three of them in that niche. I know, but we are technically in that niche because we are a couple. No, podcasting. like I literally mean like sex ed as. Oh, the but niche. we're not doing sex ed. Like sort of deep is supposed to be like sort of deep topics. Yeah, I know. But you're taking it sexually. No, because that, that was literally what you just said. <laughs> no, I'm saying that the the innuendo is there, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. The the innuendo is there for us. We are a, a couple, and that's like. I don't know. Anyway, so that's just one option. We can move on to the options that you haven't heard of. Okay, fine. Um, Okay, the next option that I have is started with an email. Uh? Started with an email. Because our relationship started with an email. It's a little bit of a mouthful, in my opinion. It like it's not my fe- favorite. Be it started with an email. Hey guys, welcome to. It started with an email. Ba da ba ba ba. Nah. Wow. I don't think like it rolls. The McDonald's off. jingle, really? <laughs> I don't think it rolls off. The top. Are we gonna get charged for that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Go eat the McDonald's spicy <laughs> chicken sandwich. Okay. Um. Okay. So do we like? We don't like it. There's something there. I think it could be workshopped. Okay. But... Yeah. I think it needs to be workshopped. Okay. The next one, the third option that I came up with is two fish in the sea. Because, you know, like people are always like, there's plenty of fish in the sea when you're dating. But we are just two fish in the sea. Like we're dating. Didn't the Christian dating site kind of take that metaphor and run with it? Wait, what? Plenty of fish. Isn't that like Christian Tinder? Oh, I forgot about that. I think it is Christian Tinder. So Plenty of fish. But we're not plenty of fish. We are two fish in the sea. I know, but are we a Christian podcast? No. Like, I feel like that's a no, sub... No, but just because they put that meaning onto it... Two people who it, met on Plenty of Fish could start a podcast... Called... Can we trademark this? Two Fish in the Sea. <laughs> and then two people who have, like, a biblical origins to their relationship uh, can come to us and I pinch it. I never thought about that meaning. So, like, to me, it was such a clever name because it's, like, Two Fish in the Sea. That's us. I feel like it needs less, though. Okay, like, fine. The same way with, I have it less. started with the email. Like, I feel like yeah. that's that's the tagline. Uh, gotcha. Okay. The next one on my list, because I'm an overachiever, is he said, she said. He said, she said. That's got great logo potential. Okay. Now, the only thing with this one is. That exists, doesn't it? It, it exists. It's like. It's like a board game or something. He, no, no. It exists as a podcast. Though, oh. Unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to include it in there because I do come up with good names, but they already exist. Uh, I I wanted to try changing it to like he says, she says, but I'm pretty sure that's like something already as well. It's yeah. So anyways, that's funny. Though. The next one um, we could call our podcast third wheel podcast, third wheel, the podcast, like whoever is listening, the viewer right. is our third wheel. Third, and that doesn't exist? That I, I didn't look it up. Third We'll have wheel. to look that We're going to have up. to grab all these usernames before yeah. this goes out. I know. Okay, th- third wheel. <clears throat> third wheel podcast. Third wheel works well. Because the viewer, again, or the listener, whoopsie, the listener is our third wheel. I kind of like it. Let me sit with that one. Okay, and the last one I had is called Worth the Wait. Worth the Wait. Yeah. Go worth on. the wait go on like also sounds like christian dating but boo. go on okay well my thinking i'm not slandering my it. thinking just... was two twofold like one is that like we waited nine years to <laughs> actually be with each other so worth the wait and then also this kind of applies to like the old podcast but my mom and i was would always put out the podcast late but it was always worth the worth oh, the wait yeah. so like late always late but worth the wait like, we're going to be more consistent and on time, but, 
like just to give a nod to omg mom the podcast um we could call it worth the wait i like the last two third wheel and third, worth the wait. third wheel especially man there could be there's something in there well hopefully it's not taken because i didn't look those two up like there's a lot of that we could do with even logos like surely yeah. there's like a negative space thing yeah okay okay we'll have to look it up let's not get our hopes up okay all right those are the options you guys so let us know which one you think is the best you can tweet us text in text that we really need to get a text number you keep saying that <laughs> you can tweet us or you can write on the youtube if you're listening on youtube uh you can write in the comments but sort of deep started with an email two fish in the sea third wheel and worth the wait let us know okay okay i have a question for you eric okay if you met your friends now because your friends are are from childhood right if you met them now i can't nod i have to say yes yes i have to be audible yes be audible if you met your friends now today do you think that you would become friends with them that's a that's a wild question i watched uh i was watching um new girl and a new girl cc and jess we're like, I don't know if we'd be friends if we met now. And I was like, whoa, that's kind of interesting to think about because you and I always say or we sometimes pontificate on the idea that if we had met in university like we could have because we were in the same program, the same year, the same school, everything the same, we just never crossed paths, that you don't think or that we don't think that we might have dated back then because of the people that we were then but we just mesh so well for the people that we are now. I think like what, what I can't figure out is, is I think we spoke about this before in New York, actually, how like when you're growing up, you have more time to just like screw around and do whatever. And I don't have, or I don't make time to do that as much now. So like when I was in high school and every Friday I'd meet up and, and jam with a bunch of guys, like I, I don't have the time mm-hmm. to have that like band set up anymore or I don't have yeah. the time to just go hang out and spend an afternoon playing video games. Like I like to me, that's where I think of some of the ways that like I hung out with people the most in school was just yeah. like stuff that now I don't have the time to to do every other day or every weekend or whatnot so it's kind of hard to think like yeah how would you even form that kind of relationship but it's not about how would you form it it's just looking at your friends and the people that they are today would you be if you met them would you be friends with them yeah I like just like us back then if we had met each other back then we don't think that we would have dated because we were two different people. Yeah, like I mean, I don't know the the the. It feels like the the obvious answer is no because why is it obvious? Because uh, like, I think that what happens is like everyone changes as they grow up, mm-hmm. and you kind of reach different phases to the point where the thing that keeps you together is is like or keeps you like hanging out is sort of shared experience or in a st- like there's mm-hmm. there's something that connects it but like um so are you saying that the that the only reason that you're friends with your friends now is because you have history with them no but it's like um okay let's say uh you like soccer yeah so then in school you end up having this circle of people who like soccer as well and then all the time every day five days a week you're hanging out with these people and then you form this deeper bond over soccer because you see them all the time when you don't see them all the time all you can do is text about the games occasionally Mm -hmm. meet up to watch them which is even harder these days so like what then makes you have that bond is the bond that you had before Right. So I feel like if I met the same people now, Mm -hmm. we'd probably be able to have the same conversations we do now. But the thing that makes it like a friend Mm -hmm. is something that's happened in the past. So you kind of locked that in because every day at school you could hang out 
right. or every Friday you could get together and jam. And like that is something that would be harder now. So the level of of close closeness or familiarity was yeah. born 10 years ago. No, I get that aspect of it, but I'm not asking about the level of but bond or how you I would make it saying. work. I'm asking like the person that your friend is today. If you had met them at a bar, would you hit it off is what I'm asking. Or yeah. would you not? I, I think that I know what you're saying and the answer is yes. But okay. if I didn't have 15, 20 years of knowing them. It, then you might not have given it a chance. Not just that. I just don't think it, it would continue as anything more than just like, like when I played pickup soccer, like I, th- they watch the same games. They're interested in the same stuff, but it's none of those people are people I text to this day because yeah. I just didn't have that 10 years of. Well, I, I don't, that doesn't, that's not true for me because like, Annette I met on a sequester Mm -hmm. game show and we were only playing that for a week and she's like a lifelong friend now do you know what I mean yeah like for a week that's a unique experience and we had no idea that our interests would align I had no idea what she did for a living on that show like we were just in there to play that and and we actually hated each other after because she thought that I was a that I hated women. <laughs> she thought that I hated women. Okay. So she teamed up with this other girl and they both were tweeting that I was a woman hater because it was me left with all the guys and I had voted a net out who was the last female and we hated each other. And then I wrote this long thing back to her and, and how she, about how like she was she had a sharp tongue and that's the reason why I couldn't keep her in there. Not because I hated women. And uh and then now we're like really good friends. But I always forget that we started out hating each other. But anyways, um, so I don't like, I don't care in this question. Anyways, I don't care about like how you would make it work or how strong the bond would be. I would just, I would just want to know like if you met your friend now, do you think that you would uh, hit it off? Like, do you think you would be their friend? Because I think that there are some people Like, I look back on university, let's say, and some of the people that I was really close with uh, in university, mostly the guys, I think, I look at them now and I'm like, ah, I've grown so much and it just doesn't look like they've grown at all. And I, I don't think I could be friends with them if I met them now. I think that there's another thing. There's there's another thing possibly where, like, I feel... Like, I have just this super sense of, like, who someone is rather Mm -hmm. than who they're presenting themselves to be. Mm -hmm. And it's not, like, 100% accurate, but I felt pretty strongly in our program, like, the people who were just putting on a front. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, especially in university, I feel like for a lot of people, it's a second chance So then they get to be someone different that they weren't Mm -hmm. in high school and they try something new. And like, I very much felt that I could see that in people Mm. or the people who were just looking for someone to hang out with for the next four years and then never really talk to them again. And I don't know if that's me just looking at it in hindsight. Yeah. But that's sort of the other side of it is I don't necessarily think that I like I'm kind of saying, yes, I think that if I met the same people today we still get on because i almost like i try my best to filter out the people who are just trying to act interested like you're a good judge of character is what you're saying i think so because i just don't have time for people who i don't i don't even know how to describe it do you think you would see through the person that i was there and know that i would be the person that i am now because no. I think that's like sort of impossible because I had to go through a traumatic life experience to like really no, become who I am. I'm, yeah, it's not like a psychic thing. Yeah, it's just, yeah. No, I know. You can you can tell when someone is acting unnaturally. Yeah. When someone is not acting who they truly are. Mm-hmm. And that always sort of just unsettled me because it, it felt like, I mean, acting is the right word. Like yeah. they're putting on a performance. Yeah. Okay, I guess this is another theoretical question, Mm. but if you weren't doing, like, if you weren't on the career path that you were on now, what, what else would you do? Like, I heard, I think it was either Carrie Underwood or Kelly Clarkson 
they were would be a marine biologist. Whoa. I know. What do you think you would be doing? Like, if you could choose a different career path than the media industry, the entertainment industry. Well, okay, I'm I'm just going to say, like, design and content creation because entertainment industry is too big. Okay, but I'd still be in the entertainment industry, but I think I would be in music. I know, but but for me, remember when I asked you if you knew my answer and you were like, you'd be an actress. And I'm like, well, I want to be an actress still. Like, it's not something that I've put off the table. And you're like, oh... So you mean like completely different and I mean completely different like But a musician is completely I guess it, different. I guess from you're not pursuing that right either. Now. You're also not pursuing that though. I yeah. Yeah, like you do it as a hobby. You don't do it for for real real. I'm not super interested in the grind. Yeah. Like in introducing that to my life. Yeah. If that was my only thing, I would yeah. go like to me one, it's impossible now. Mm-hmm. I I know we've spoken about this before, but to me, you're not a musician unless you're playing in front of people. I guess. So you I, need to be, and, and I don't know. I don't think you can be a musician until we're allowed to get in front of audiences because music changes when you're playing for people. I guess, but I don't agree with that because not every person tours. Like you could have an album out and a ton of people can listen to it, but you don't have to have played I know, in front of people. But that's people. like saying the Harlem Globetrotters are as good as a real basketball team. All they do is like tricks and stuff. They don't have the ability to play as well as the Lakers or the Celtics or the Raptors. But they are, there's different types of surfing, you know, like there's not just. What the hell? I'm just saying like there are different type of athletic activities. There are different types of musicians. There are even different types of rappers. There are rappers who make songs and there are rappers who strictly freestyle, but they're all one and the same. They are rappers. I, I think that the like if you're a session musician and you're just coming in to play like that's still I feel like important. Y- if you are making a living off of what you're doing, you are that thing. You're a version of that thing. Well, but yeah. it's like not the full thing because I to me, that's the the reason you do the craft mm-hmm. is to impact people. And, and I think everyone's you, reasons are different. You can't say that a reason defines no, but like the you, title of somebody. I, I know like from personal experience that when you play a song in a garage mm-hmm. and you play that exact same song in front of people, yeah, it is different. It hits different. It connects with people yeah, different. Yeah, it might. When you lay it down on a record or a digital file or whatever the hell, it is it is such a hollow version of that thing when you're in the room and you're feeling okay, the vibration. what about your dad, for example? What about he him? He loves Billie Eilish, but he would not go to a Billie Eilish concert because he does not like live music because of the loudness of that the music. That is a unique situation. But though. I'm just saying, just because something is recorded, it doesn't mean that Billie Eilish is less of a musician to him. Because he's never seen her live. What about everybody who's n- who's not seen but or gone to a concert? But even just watching her do a live performance, like the acoustic sessions on Apple Music yeah. right now, it, you can just see the way that song will never, ever be recorded the same way again. Those interactions she has with the audience during the song changes her approach to the music. Okay, but wedding bands are still musicians. I know, but it's such a fridge version of it. But I'm just saying, like... No, but it's such a sterilized... Well, wedding bands are still performing for people, I know. I knew you were going to say that, but I feel like you would not categorize them as musicians. Well, it's different because if all you're doing is clocking out, like, Wanted Dead or Alive (laughs) by Bon Jovi every week, like... But they're still... That's what they do for a living. You're... But... I'm not disagreeing. Anyways, you're just, we are so far You're just from the twisting question. the response, though, because I, a wedding band is still a band. All I'm saying is, like, the I think that every SoundCloud rapper yeah. wants to get on the stage. I, I agree. So, I'm not disagreeing with that. But I don't I, even know how we got onto this, but all I'm saying either. is I want to be a musician. Yeah. And I could be a musician in the sense that I've got a guitar. We're on a microphone. I could make stuff in here. You could be. And I wouldn't be fulfilled. Because I want to have that experience of standing on a stage with the house lights down. But that's your metric of success. No, it's my metric of the music actually. I want to see the people listen to my music. I know, but a lot of people without the ability to make music like you can would just wish that they could just make music in their bedroom and put it out for people on the internet. Do and you then see they'd how want to perform me- it. But do you see how your metric of success no, like, but they'd defines- want to perform it. 
you don't, I don't know think what they would a, want. I unless you have stage fright. Yeah. There's no musician who would say that their ideal is just to <laughs> get it recorded in their bedroom. I don't know. And then ship it off. It doesn't have to be in a bedroom. It could be in a studio. Whatever. Everyone it doesn't wants matter. To make an imp- the Beatles got on a roof and played for whoever would show up <laughs> on the street. People want to play in front of people. I'm just saying not every musician does that. Though. That's fine. Like but- you can just be a recording artist. You don't have but to be even a those live session drummers go artist. out on tour and and play. I'm just saying you don't have to be a live artist to be a musician to be a real musician just like a rapper does not have to know how to freestyle to be a legitimate rapper. Two different things. I know. No, no, no. Those are the same things. No. It's a, it's a good, good example. Anyways, back to the actual how? question. Back, how? back to the actual you can't just say good example like pat yourself on the back and be like moving on no this is great great awesome i can do whatever i want yeah okay answer the question what the hell was the oh, question oh you would be a musician that's your question. i would be a musician okay that's cool if Are i you gonna ask me or not well you already said you wanted to act no i didn't that is so- no i said that you think that hey, i'm getting hey, hey, really one annoyed, nil right? real or in <laughs> one nil <laughs> Go on. Wait, did you say that as a joke? Yes, okay. because I knew you'd spell you, Your face if, is going red. I know, I'm it's so in, mad right now. Out. If in, you're not saying that out. as a joke, I swear you're going to get it after this podcast. Let's... Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it down. Okay. Um, I think I would be a chef. I would. I would go to chef yeah. school. I'd be Gordon Ramsay, but better. Uh, you can practice that here, you know. Uh, <laughs> if you want to start cooking, you won't let me have a fridge full of groceries. What you do hate you mean? it. The fridge is You're overflowing. Like, the fridge is so full of groceries. I hate it. Because now it's like the stress of you got to get them. Anyways, before I think I would bad. be a chef. Okay. Um, but my mom always said that I would be a good lawyer. And I wanted to become a, an organic chemist. So, like, I have so many options. But I think, like, loving what I would do and doing something that will pay the bills, I think I would choose a chef. Because while I might like crunch time of being a lawyer or, like, the actual creating chemistry in the lab part of being a chemist, I think that, like... It's too much of like messing with somebody's life that I I don't know if I would want oh. that power in that way. You know what I mean? Like, what if I put an innocent man behind bars? Or what if I make a chemical that is affecting people? Like, I make makeup that is severely affecting people and having side effects. You know what I mean? Like, I think I'll just stick to chef. I'll stick to chef. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. What are we eating tonight? I don't know. You won't let me have the leftover Thanksgiving food. Because we need a we need a break. It's been two days of just exactly. eating. No one hasn't. Yesterday I ate one meal with my mom. I said I Soup wasn't going to eat. Steak. And then we had these big Soup ass steak. steaks. They're so good though. All right. That's all we have for you today. That's it. Um, so we are recording this from our bedroom. And just for today we need a new space we when we listened to last week's podcast we realized that the space was way too big and we could hear the fridge and all that so we moved to the bedroom where there's a little bit more cotton and it's a smaller space but we're like and cross-legged on the bed i like know guys actually you can see something what oh my god this is some high school girl <laughs> crap <laughs> Okay, you can see what our bedroom looks like in our recent YouTube video on my channel, at EvieY on YouTube. Um, Check it out. It's our apartment tour. And I think I did such a good job editing it. Eric thinks so too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Praise it. Come on. Well, you just did. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. And And, the filming is very good. And also, I am super close. The music is very good. Thank you. I am super close to being done my poetry book that exploits my love life. Woo woo. Well, it's a mini one, so I'm really almost done it. Eric is looking at me like, are you really, bitch? Are you really almost done it? (laughs) I actually am almost done it. I have, uh, I finished all the poems, like done, pens down on the poems, and, and I have rewritten like edited like edited two of the seven stories so i have to do 
Um, seven minus two is five. I have to do five more of the stories. I used to What's going to happen first? You finishing that or this podcast has a name? I finish the book first. Okay. I'm not betting on this podcast having okay. it. Unless okay. you choose one right after we press done. Oh, we choose one. It's not an Eric driven I know, decision. But you're the one that's being all... You would have gone with he said, she said. Sort of deep. Sort of deep. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.